it's wanting to work. Now we just got to get everybody situated. All right. We are live, I think. Hello, everybody. Welcome <laughs> to Quill and Sword. I really hope that we are working and we are live. Um, everything on my end looks like we're live. So uh, it's been a little while. Um, you will see that the name is changed. Uh, I'm Bobby Partridge. I am uh, the GM here at Quill and Sword. Uh, that being said, we're going to roll our dice. And we'll have these other lovely people introduce themselves and their characters. Um, we are missing a Marissa tonight, unfortunately, but um, we wish her well. And here we go. Okay, that's Robin. Okay, uh, so I sort of maybe accidentally made a deal with a demon. Um, I have wishes that I am compulsively... Uh, having to use, because it is not a you may situation, it is a you must, I kind of already agreed to use them. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm in trouble now. Um, Vera, do you want it? Um, well, prior to you making a deal with the demon, we, we, like, saved, uh, kitty people in the, in the holiday town. I kind of remember doing that. Um, mm -hmm. Sunita? Anu got into a fight with a vagabond. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. And then intimidated the guards to leave him alone. Yeah. I mean, in all fairness, Anu could have, like, kicked all their asses. Like, they were not powerful guards, and Anu is a powerful hero at this point. <laughs> Megan? <laughs> Um, well, um, uh, what did Tempest do? Um, <laughs> long time. Um, yeah, uh, Tempest is absolutely not happy about, about dealing with demons and stuff like that. Absolutely not happy. She's, she's upset after very successfully. Um, yeah, yeah, she's not happy at all. That's valid. That's valid. So, um... <laughs> There, there is a lot that has gone on. We are going to get into some of the uh, shenanigans with what's going on on the boat. Uh, everyone, Sirenscape is what we use for our sound effects. So I have mentioned that. And now we're just going to go straight into our intro. I know it's a really fast intro. That's just what we've got right now. Um, things don't like to behave for me, so you know we're we're going with what we got. Um, but anyway, uh, so as we open up, but we sorry, I was watching the intro on the side. Yeah, it's it's very. <laughs> yep, it's just the icon fading in and out, and a little bit of music because that's what we got. Um, that's what we got right now. I tried to edit the intro and it crashed on me and I'm not sure what's going on with my video editor because, you know, things just like to be dumb for me. Um, so uh, with that being said, uh, you guys are currently on the ocean. You are uh, currently aboard Edmund's ship and it is calm today. It is... Very easy. The sea breeze is um, wafting this morning, and it is mid-morning, and you guys uh, wanted to have a bit of a conversation together, if I'm not mistaken. Is that correct? It is. So who's going to approach whom about this? <laughs> um... I don't know. Would 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 Tempest just confront Masquerade directly right now? Um, I'm gonna say that Tempest is doing her um, uh, calisthenics and sword training on the deck, um, but she's practicing without a sword because she doesn't have a sword. Um, 
I'm gonna. I I I would say that Wisp would approach Mask, who is watching these calisthenics from like you know how the ships will have like the deck and then the slightly higher part of the deck and just sort of like leaning and looking from there. Yeah, that's the poop deck. <laughs> okay, I am watching from the poop deck. <laughs> um, enjoying the view. Honestly, I'm barely seeing it. <clears throat> so, <laughs> how are things? Oh, they're things. Hmm. Thinking maybe we should talk about that? It's probably not a bad idea. So, sorry, out of character. I'm trying to remember how much I already know. Uh, I mean, Masquerade basically went directly to all of you as soon as the dream was over and went, "Hey, I fucked up." Okay, I just I I couldn't remember what was or wasn't public knowledge. The whole thing. The whole thing is public knowledge. The whole thing's public knowledge. Got it. So, I guess maybe first thing is. Um, You won't be too judgy towards the new anymore. <laughs> oh, no. Half the reason that I agreed to do it in the first place was because I didn't want it offered to a new actor. That is frustratingly valid. <laughs> I know, right? So, do you have any idea what you're going to do with this? Or did you just kind of leap into this with half a plan? I was trying to buy myself time when I leapt into this in the first place. There was no plan. There was just, I don't know how long I'm going to be stuck in here if I do not say yes to this entity. We didn't get a name off it, did we? Bobby, did I? Oh, um, no. Oh, no, I remember because I said I was going to be red, and then you guys made fun of me because you thought it was sexual, but it wasn't. <laughs> he tried to get his, your name out of you, and he was very much that, like, coy, trying to play that game of get your name without giving you his kind of thing. Right, and then I just decided to call him Big Red. Mm-hmm. Like so, the gum. yeah, that's, he's Big Red. <laughs> um, Steven, you yes. can make your own call on this, but I'm going to inquire. Would this guy be well-known enough in lore that I could make gay religion or arcana check based off a of description? Maybe religion? Maybe? That's not as high, but I've got plus seven in that. So if you want to decide if that warrants me trying or not. Yeah, you could try. All right. Let's see. So as you're kind of thinking about this, um, the ghosts are going about their business, you know, running the ship and whatnot. Uh, Anu, what are you doing? Trying to stop myself from yep. negging. Mask. <laughs> okay. You know, I'm going to spend an inspiration and re-roll that. Okay. That is not much better. That's a 16. 16 makes it, actually. Oh, dang! So, um... So, you no based on it, it really is like you it could be any devil like you know like devils like to make deals that's kind of their thing right they look for people yeah. dumb enough to enter a pact with them especially a one-sided pact and then mask mentions that he wouldn't give his name and it makes you think of this entity called the name keeper Mm. who does not give a name, but 
will take a name. And oh no, was naming him a mistake? <laughs> well, what's what is uh, unique about this person is um, this devil will take a person's name and then they will essentially have access to their knowledge, their skills, their identity, and will cause havoc for them, just in history. Hmm. Well, I'm glad you didn't tell him your name. I will I will relay what information I have. Well, when you're dealing with demons and devils and fey things, you, you typically shouldn't. It's a good idea to keep that pretty mum. So, you know, there's there's that. That's good at least. Uh Tempest at this point has um stopped her calisthenics, grabbed a towel, and is toweling off as she walks up the poop deck. Uh, so the question then becomes how do we move forward do we try for the most innocuous possible wishes or do we construct them in legalese or both both okay I, I, I think the only thing you can do is to not make a wish at all Oh, but I have to. I already said I would. That is already you part of the to agreement. Before you die. That's right? fair. Not in a week or a day or a year. You put no time limit on it. Before you die, you must make one wish. Um, in which I mean, case. I, no, it's, it's I three. It we depends. gave them three drops of blood. Three wishes. I was going to say. I, it, it, it might depend on, uh, on how this uh, adventure goes. <laughs> Um, did did he say what would happen to you if you don't use your three? No. I mean, this is so, very open ended. This is so open ended. It's dangerous. It is unbelievably dangerous. Look, I know from experience that you can't just get something for free no matter how innocuous it seems, right? The, there will be a cost. I had to pay a cost. Everyone has to pay a cost. What if I wish for him to be my friend? <laughs> so, I mean... Would that mean that he would hang around with you all the time? Have yeah, you never had a toxic a... friend? Have you never had a toxic friend before? Oh, that that was like my entire last character arc. I don't know if you know this. Um Yes. So if I could make one slightly morbid suggestion. Sure. If you want if we want to try and burn off the first two in whatever way we feel is safest. It may not be the worst idea to keep the third one in reserve for a situation where you, where you're liable to die, and then just roll the dice. Because at that point, what have you have? To, what have you got to lose? Oh, I mean, quite a I, bit. But yes, yes I understand quite a bit. that. But unless we come up with three really, really good ideas. No, I don't have a problem keeping one in my back pocket. I think that's probably a sensible decision. Uh, as a matter of fact, we never know when I'm going to run into something that I trust less than I trust Big Red. This is true. Look. I know you think that you can make some kind of innocuous wish, right? Something that could only be good. Right? But th there's no there's no guarantee of that. No, there isn't. And, and you don't okay. know the ramifications. We know nothing about the ramifications of making a wish. Look, I lost everything because of my wish. Everything in my life changed. What did you 
it's probably way too personal to ask you what you wished for, actually. Never mind. No, no, it's fine. If it'll get you to never wish this wish, I will tell you. Okay, I can't promise that. Like, I don't know if you know me and my terrible impulse control. <laughs> you, you mean so, like with the map? How did I... Yes. <laughs> Just like with the map. Thank you. Look. I never told you how I came to serve the Raven Queen, did I? No. Well, I'm from the Shadowfell. From there. We we live there. All of the Shadakai. Most okay. of the Shadakai live there. And um It's not it's not a happy place. You know? It's not a happy place at all. But but it was a place where our village thrived. But um, an evil and powerful wizard came to recruit us into his army. He was Recruiter going to recruit conscript. Both. Okay. He was looking for willing people to help him fight on what he called the prime material plane, which was very primal centrist of him. Um, I mean, why is one any more material than the other? Anyway, um, he asked, but, um, but most of the members of our village refused and told him to go away, including my father, including my uncle, including my mother. Everyone told him to go away, and he did. But he decided that he would not have a group of Shadakai at his back as he went forward, because he was afraid we would ally with someone else. And so he turned his hordes upon us. I was young. I was barely 25. Barely. And my father died in war. And my brother died in war. And my mother forbid me from training, forbid me from attending anything. I could do only what my sister and I could do. We could heal. We could take care of the wounded, but it wasn't enough because eventually they came and they started to burn our village. And so when I had a frustration, I wished more than anything for the power to repel this horde. There were a dozen of us. We all took the pact on the same night and the Raven Queen promised us the power to repel the evil wizard. And I did. I saved the words of my... I want to save these 5,000 people. The 5,000 people of my village who were left. And the Raven Queen complied. She gave me the sword. You know the sword. You saw it. She gave me the power. She gave me the time to learn it. And come back in time to save the village. But the cost, for every life I saved, I had to take one in her name. And she got to tell me who that was and when. Every time. Men, women, children, the defenseless, anyone. She said, I was compelled. I must obey. 5,000 people. And on the last day, the last person, instead, of just it being one more random person on a lonely road on some plane of existence I would never, ever, ever come back to. I had to burn down a house. And that house, of course, burned an entire village to the ground. There is no wishing away your problems. They will come back to you. Which 5,000 people should die and which 5,000 people should live? I made a choice. I made a wish 
I made a deal with an eldritch entity, and I spent hundreds of years paying for it. Who knows who should have suffered and who not should have suffered, whether I was right or not. And now, here you are, with this hmm. choice in front of you, right now. You have the same choice. Or we could do something good with this power. But you don't know the cost. Well... You don't know what you will release onto the world. Because it I... could be you that you release upon the world, as I did me. What I do know... <clears throat> is that... What that makes clear to me in this instance is that if we put that in our back pocket and wait for a moment of desperation, then a moment of desperation will come and it'll look like an easy out. You're right. It's not one. But that also means that I think that we should use them for things that are not as serious as 5,000 lives. I mean, Mass, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Tempest, if the template that you laid out is what is standard, whatever you gain must be taken somewhere else. If the wish is small, how great is the damage? I mean, I'm not saying that it can't be twisted in some way, but these deals seem to hinge on the idea that you're going to wish for something big. Well, what if you don't? I... What if the, f the first one is free? Oh, you don't have to pay me for this one. But the next one, and the next one, and the next one. And then it's like, well, well I, I told you three, but you could have one more if you want one. Of course you can have one if you want one. The thing is, we can what if this to death. My question of will a smaller ask have a smaller consequence has at least some precedent based off what you are saying. Yes, but the Raven Queen is not a demon. We know that. No, right? no, but we have to work with the information that we have. She's still a deal maker in her own way. Yeah. So what is the cost? Because there's nothing for free. Who's gonna give it to I, us for free? Nothing. I'm not I'm not disagreeing. Hey. But if we ask small, the cost may be small. So we need to know what he wants. And that's just bringing me right back around to I should make friends with this devil. Because then we'll know. You're going to wish to know what it is he wants and why? No. No, no, no. I'm going to make friends with this devil. I am going to invite him over for lunch occasionally. We are going to have conversations like normal people. And I'm going to find out like a normal person. What about any of so us is normal? Well, I didn't say that I was going to be a normal person. I said I was going to do these things like a normal person. I, I, you can only expect so much from me. So, mask. I'm I, I, I'm not going to do anything drastic to try and stop you from doing this. Um, I am just going to point out for my own edification. I'm already deeply uncomfortable with how casual you are with Baba. The idea of you making more um, otherworldly friends who could um, wipe out my existence on a whim doesn't thrill me. Okay, but if we're not friends, isn't that a little bit worse, though? Because then he's like an acquaintance that is already in our sphere that could potentially decide to wipe out our existences on a whim. Again, I'm not gonna... It's not the worst idea that could be had. I'm just gonna voice my discomfort. Okay, how about I will promise that I won't go out of my way to make friends with any more monsters after this. And if they happen to fall into my lap, that's not my fault. Okay. 
Mask, you play a dangerous, dangerous game. I think that if it were me, I would want someone to give me the benefit of the doubt. And I'm going to, like, drop guys entirely and just be, like, straight up, like, black and white, like, like, changeling face. People very rarely ever do. And you know what? If they would, I'm kind of cool. So don't I have to try? N no. You don't have to try, right? Well, I have to try. You you wouldn't have to try, but I do. Oh, okay. I I, I mean, he he <laughs> must get something out of this, right? He doesn't give you power for free. Why would he do that? Just to see you mess with this world? No, you're absolutely right. There is definitely a motive here, and I'm going to find out what it is. But I'm going to do it in good faith. I'm going to do it as a friend. And then if it turns out that isn't a good strategy, we can kick his ass. Can demons even have friends? Are they cap capable of compassion and caring? Can they get attached to people? If you became his friend, would he care whether you lived or died? Are there even parts of his brain that do that? If, if he has I brain, became his friend, would I actually be the person that I was displaying at the moment that I said I was? Tempest is very confused by that. Yeah, think about it. And Mask gets up and storms out. Or in, as it were, because we're on the deck. <laughs> I don't think I understand. I don't think it. That didn't make any sense. So, um, what's the what is Anu doing during all of this? Anu is was taking in both sides. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go... What do I want to do? Uh... I think I'm just... I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait for someone else to say something. Not, I'm not quite sure what I, what. <laughs> no, I think I'll just look at Tempest and point out. <sighs> I get what you're saying. Everything comes with a price. I also speak from experience. But we're also the Motley crew, and it has always turned out all right. Ah, yes, the normalization of deviance. No matter what the percentage, no matter what the probability of something bad happening, since nothing bad has happened so far, nothing bad could possibly <laughs> happen. Yes, yes. Oh, I understand bad, completely. No, 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 bad things have definitely happened. We just managed to. I was gonna say, work around where it. have you been? <laughs> Look, I don't actually get to make this decision, right? I, I voiced my opinion. And again, Mask is going to do what Mask is going to do. And I just hope that. We're unfortunately already in the thick of it. We could only just think critically about it. Because obviously we can't not use the wishes. Why not? It's too tempting for you, isn't it? No, just those are the rules. I mean, we still don't know. Do you want to risk the consequences? You're talking about the consequences of the wish. There could be consequences to not wishing. And one would assume 
quite dire ones, otherwise people just would never wish. Or it could be a ploy to get close to us. Maybe there is no actual contract. Maybe it's just, sure, there's a deal. We'll whisper it together. It'll just be our little secret, you know? And then one becomes used to it, dependent upon it. And when you need something, all of a sudden there's a cost. I mean, there's a cost to everything, Tempest. And I don't just mean wishes. I mean literally everything. Everything you do, every decision you make, there is a cost. And you don't know what it is ever. That is life. And I'm not trying to be dismissive about the enormity of what it is that we are facing right now. I'm not. But we could literally do what if scenarios until the earth crumbles into the sea and it will not change the fact that literally everything we do and every choice that we ever make will have consequences that we cannot foresee that is existing we cannot lock up to the point of refusing to literally do anything because what if there's consequences we might as well just jump in the ocean and die right now except who knows what the consequences of that would be either I understand your trepidation. I do. I understand that this is deeply tied into what you have been through, and I am in no way trying to minimize that. But that cannot be the sole decider of what does or doesn't happen, and we cannot let fear lock us up into inaction. I'm not thrilled with this idea either. I've said as much, but just spinning our wheels and doing but what if, but what if, but what if, but what if means literally nothing happens. Nothing from us. And we know what the consequence of that is. And that is all this nonsense that we're trying to put a stop to. A plan is useless, but planning is um, invaluable. And what we're doing right now with every what if is we're planning. What if this happens? What if that happens? Who knows if any of them will happen? But we'll have an idea now, right? We'll know no, what we'll to have look a for. Yes, we will have a guess at best. Mm -hmm. And right now, we don't even have that. Well, before it was, let's just start make wishes. Let's just make some wishes. See what happens. And it is currently different. How? Because now we understand, because we've discussed, at least now everyone understands what some of these scenarios could be. The friendly scenario, the everything has a cost that I didn't tell you scenario, the it's all just fake scenario. Well, these things are possible now, and we have a list of those. Okay. Uh, Mask, uh, you change your plan yet, or you still have the same one? Like coming back out from below deck with a sandwich. Um. <laughs> No, I'm totally going to try to make friends with him. Like, I'm not going to wish for that, but I'm going to, like, invite him to tea and stuff. Do you guys want to do tea with us? No. Yeah, I didn't think so. <laughs> Was he hot? <laughs> yes. I'm going to go back to one of the crows. <laughs> Are you saying he was red hot? Oh, entirely. <laughs> Do you want to come to tea now? No. <laughs> I think you want to come to tea. I'm just saying. Look, it, in the end... I'm going to turn into him end... and show you guys. <laughs> I can do that. You can. Okay. O okay, Bobby. What's he look like? Um, so... Uh, on the thirst scale. Um, on the thirst scale, it really depends on how into gargoyles and tiefling-esque races you are. But, um, he is definitely, uh, like, in the realm of, like, Goliath from Gargoyles. <laughs> okay. Um, he, this guy is ripped, 
But you also, being an extra planar creature, know that devils, demons, fey, they can look like however they want to look like. This guy's appearance tells you he is very in tune with his sexuality and he is fine with that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like this, but okay. <laughs> you are free to do. You are free to do what you want. It's your wish. You, you know. I, I don't think you've promised my soul. No. So, I, I've given my advice. Didn't really promise mine either. Just promised that I'd make some wishes, but I didn't promise I wouldn't have questions. <laughs> Tempest grabs her towel. I'm going to get something to drink. And walks off. Okay. Yeah, she's mad. <laughs> so... I mean, from her perspective, you just voluntarily got into a situation she has been trying for literally hundreds of years to get out of. Yeah. Yeah, she's mad. <laughs> I, voluntarily. I'm not here to litigate. I'm not a god's damn lawyer. <sighs> just, just give her a little space. Yeah. I gotta eat the sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to scale up to the crow's nest one armed and eat the sandwich. <laughs> Sounds like a good plan. Um, Masquerade, when are you planning on contacting Big Red, as we're calling him? Um, I mean, I, I don't actually know how to do that. I figured this was a he'd call me situation. He, he told you you could call him. Okay, well then, now, I guess. Okay. So, you're eating your sandwich in the crow's nest. And you blink once. And... Sitting there in the crow's nest with you is the guy. Um, you know, I didn't... He's not his big gargoyle self with the massive wings, because that just is so unwieldy for all of this. Instead, who you see sitting here with you is a human man. Okay. Dark, almost blue-black skin, twisted black hair... And vividly red eyes. He does have fangs still. He, you, you get the vibe, he kind of likes those. But his clothing is like a nobleman's. Doublet, puffy sleeves, the whole everything. And it's all shades of red. I am gonna, like, just shift into something similar and be like, oh, I can be hoity-toity too. Um, <laughs> so I would like for you to come meet my friends. Well, probably not all of my friends. One of them is very upset about this, but I, like, you know. All right. If that's what you want. Yeah, we're gonna be friends. Do you wish that we were friends? <laughs> Hmm. That is the question, isn't it? It is. But it's not really being friends if you wish it so, you know? Hmm. It's not the same thing. That's fair. Pro so he will um, look over the crow's nest and he looks at you. This isn't my style. And he'll snap his fingers and in a puff of flame he's just at the bottom of the crow's nest instead and you can see Edmund from on deck his eyes get really wide and then he just pretends he doesn't see the guy yeah that makes sense I feel like a lot of us would rather do that too so I'm like pointing everything out like introducing people under nicknames that are not their actual names because 
I understand the game and the assignment. <laughs> okay. So who all's here for this? I'm here. Okay. <laughs> I I was not gonna miss this. Okay. Is Tempest here? Uh, eventually, Tempest will arrive. I mean, I don't know how long it takes to go down to get some water and clean up a little bit and then come back out. But, you know, the the fresh air is always preferable to Tempest than the inside of the ship. So she will be back. Okay. And Nim starts coming up from below deck. Edmund sees this and immediately just, like, hucks himself over the railing and then, like, shoves her back down and slams the door. Like, he know he he knows that she is not made for these games. Fair. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done, Edmund. Very wise. Thank you. No, he's he's in there too. He doesn't want to have anything to do with this guy either. All right, then I say nothing. <laughs> Just sort of nod and be like, "Yep, yeah, no, that works." So this is big fun. I'll I'll do a not quite overly elaborate bow, like just elaborate enough that you can't be sure if it's sarcastic. Hmm. He will mimic the gesture. I'm just gonna sit here smirking. I'm I'm loving this. Okay. <laughs> he 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 looks over the two of you. There are more of you than this. And that. And he gestures to the door where Nim was slammed in. Hmm. Yeah, but these are the ones that are ready to talk. That's fair. So do you want to talk? Or shall I? Oh, please, if you have things to say, we are more than willing to listen. Oh, uh, not particularly. I just... I gave you three wishes, so of course I'm going to ask if you've planned on what you're doing with them. There has been some discussion. Anything concrete? <laughs> no. No, not yet, but, um, you know, one of the things that I would like to table for discussion is just hanging out with some and getting to know each other, because it's it's one of those situations, isn't it, you know? It, I suppose. <laughs> I always find it so fascinating how the shorter-lived races just waste time. Despite how little of it they have. But sure, we can waste time if that's what you want to do. No, I don't want to waste time. I want to spend some of it hanging out. And what will we, hang we be hanging from then? <laughs> oh, if you really want to. Um, I'm gonna, like, start pulling out scarves and things, like, Spanish web style, and, like, just eyeballing the mast. Huh. Well, I mean... Like, yeah, I'm gonna teach a devil some circus tricks. <laughs> Wisp is kind of raising an eyebrow and wondering if there is certain knot-tying skills that mask has not disclosed. Um... Do you want to make an insight roll? <laughs> sure, yes, please. Hang on. It ain't a great stat for me, but sure. Uh, that's sick. I mean, it's hard to tell. Like, how would you know a Shibari not from, like, any other kind when you're dealing with rigging? Fair. Hmm. Big Red just kind of looks to you, looks at the ribbons, looks at the mast. I guess spend time with Jesters, get a funny feeling. Sure. 
<laughs> yeah, that's that's what I'm do doing. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Wiz just kind of cocks their head. People don't just talk with you very much, do they? Well, frankly, when you are in my line of work, people usually aren't very interested in talking unless they want something. Because, well, I mean, who talks to a devil for fun anyway? Uh, you've just met who, uh, to be clear on, on that particular question. <laughs> Funny background event masquerade is just like swinging. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Well, I mean, fair. I did not expect this at all. They're very good. When was the last time you had an interaction that wasn't part of a deal? centuries I'm sure and he actually starts genuinely thinking about it huh it was at least five cycles ago but yeah no people just don't often want to talk with me I mean fair I suppose tell me what's your name <laughs> no. <laughs> so rude. Uh, there's rude and there's foolish. I will opt for the former. I do enough of the latter on my own. That's fair. What about you? And he looks to Anu. What about me? What's your name? What's your name? Well, that one's been calling me Big Red as of late. So I suppose that'll do. Oh, I didn't ask you what mask was calling you. Do you wish I told you my name? Oh. I'm sorry, I missed that. <laughs> you want to say it again? Do you wish... I told you my name. Do you wish that I wish that you told me your name? <laughs> <laughs> this one's amusing. I like this one. <clears throat> you have some very Tempest. interesting friends. He calls up to you swinging from the masts. Yeah, I'm gonna like come around and like swing over and like try to catch his hands and pull him into the aerials that I'm doing and I'm gonna be like plus one more soon hopefully so what do you think uh give me an acrobatics check oh absolutely let's see <laughs> theoretically I'm good at this <laughs> theoretically 22 22 hey and he got a straight three. <laughs> oh, no. So you pick him up, and he is very bad at this. He did not expect this, whatever this has become. And <laughs> he is now struggling, just full-on struggling. And you see that the shadows of the crew have actually started getting out their instruments. And... They start, like, playing music as he's swinging around. And what started as being a little bit off turns very quickly into worry and concern before all-out fear just consumes his face. And he starts screaming, no. What are you doing to me? Hey, easy, easy. All right, we're going to have to slow before I can put you down, and I'm going to need you to work with me here, okay? Now, focus on your body and feel the center of your weight, where you're swinging back and forth. Uh, this is very unlike me when I don't have wings. And he will struggle to breathe. Roll me a persuasion check. 
Okay, theoretically, I'm good at this too. <laughs> Seventeen. Seventeen. So he is going to attempt to calm himself. And he does have advantage. Okay, we'll take the second one. It's a ten. <laughs> <laughs> so he is not great, Jan, at any of this. But he is what trying. Is it that, what is it that you finally start getting lousy rolls on the DM side? And it's when we need you to actually do well. I don't know. My dice what apparently the hell, hate you. Bobby. <laughs> so yeah, he um he 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 starts breathing. It's slightly hyperventilated, but he is breathing. I'm like slowing <clears throat> the pendulum. You've got this. You're doing great. <laughs> and let's see if he can stick the landing. Oh, I got a natural twenty. Okay. <laughs> This is when, um, this is when Tempest comes out from, um, <laughs> under deck again. So what does Tempest see as soon as, uh, as soon as she walks out? You see a nobleman you've never seen before in your life of human descent who is currently swinging with Tempest, having grabbed his wrists and swirling around and slows, or, sorry, I said Tempest, mask, swirling around with him grabbed by the wrists and slowing and then finally releasing him and he actually sticks his landing perfectly and then offers a bow to the shadow crew that is currently playing music in tandem with Masquerade's performance. <laughs> I don't know what I expected, but it certainly wasn't this. He you isn't even red. What? He isn't even red. Anymore. Hmm. I'm not always red. Tempest just gives him a dirty look and huffs as she puts holds her arms over her chest. Mm-hmm. Unimpressed. Unenthused. Just <laughs> Oh, so you're the one that has a bad attitude. Okay. I actually. I think I have a very healthy attitude, thank you. Uh, it is quite healthy, I assure you. Um, it's a pleasure to meet you. What is your name? And he holds out his hand. She smiles and says, they all call me Tempest. Ah. And, and and he just narrows his eyes. That's, that is what they call you, isn't it? It is. But what is your name? Not for you to know. All right. That's fair enough. So, uh, what am I doing here exactly? I was called. I think they'd like to play some games with you. Well, Maybe some we, cards. We did just... Charades! I hear that is a fantastic... Oh my god! No, game. unironically, can we play some charades? It's <laughs> <laughs> just like dropping from the Spanish web and is just like entirely too enthused about this. You wish to play a game of charades yes no I... okay no. very well then <laughs> oh <laughs> and he <laughs> snaps his fingers and everyone is immediately transported to <laughs> this uh, <laughs> to this uh, stony place. And when I say stony, I mean, I don't mean like rocks. I mean like gemstones. There are red and orange and yellow 
gemstones jutting up from the this like red desert earth everywhere. The sky is somewhere in twilight and you realize now that the sounds of the ocean have faded and there's a sound almost like rain but you don't see it raining anywhere. It's almost like this gloomy environment has lent itself to a sort of melancholy. And there are just lines of magma in the rocks that jut up out of this sand. And uh, we will say that uh, Masquerade you are first and you find yourself currently in a very different place everyone else is here you see masquerade masquerade is currently inside this enormous glass ball and the glass ball looks like a bedroom all around. It's almost like a television. Masquerade, you are in a Voirigian bedroom of the most opulent and beautiful make. And sitting currently in the vanity with her back turned to you is Angelique. And... No, this is complicated. You feel this voice niggling the back of your head, and it says, Show her. Without your words, what do you think of her? So, this is easy. I just walk over, I pick up a hairbrush, and I start to brush her hair for her, because it's a very almost, like, parental act, and that's it. And when you do this, she turns, and it's the first time you've seen this face in a long time. Make a charisma saving throw. Okay. <laughs> 17 total 17 regardless of the emotions welling up inside you you tell us how you react to this when she looks up at you with those eyes it's your little sister she sees you like she always saw you Yeah, I just kiss her forehead. What else am I gonna do? I'm like, it doesn't matter if it's real or not. It doesn't matter if she's the same person or not. She's always going to be this person to me. And when you do that, you lean out and whoom, you are now in the same scape as everyone else. And you see Big Red looking at you in his human visage. Huh. Very good. That's one kind of point fun, for you. Next. And he snaps his fingers. Oh, that's perfect. Tempest is not amused. Tempest <laughs> is gone. <laughs> <laughs> Unamusedly gone. Unamusedly gone. Yes. Definitely not amused at all. Not having fun. I am, I for the like record. A... Megan's having fun. Tempest is not. <laughs> I feel like that's an alternative band name. Tempest. Tempest is not having fun. Can you please describe for us where we are and what we see as you find yourself outside that last house. Oh, the last house, huh? Uh-huh. Is it on the left? 
Um, so there's Tempest in her black armor with her sword, just that ridiculously giant sword sitting in her hand. And she looks to the left and she looks to the right and there is um, uh, some kind of cross between a raven and an imp giggling, right? And it's just like, last one, <laughs> last one. This is your last order. You have to do it, don't you? Have to do it. <laughs> and and Tempest is like, shut up. Except you can't. As soon as I do this, I'll be you free can't. to take your head. You know that, right? You can't speak. You're playing oh. charades. Uh, <laughs> okay. Then it wouldn't be what happened. Okay, okay. Let's see if I can. So no, you have to relive it. Just, oh, 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 okay. <laughs> Tempest goes to to speak and can't. Like her mouth goes. She, she just waves the sword at him. And he kind of flutters and laughs. <laughs> you gotta do it. You gotta do it. And um. Um, she tries she holds a sword out like like she has before right to drop it like she did later right when everyone saw when she finally dropped the sword she reaches to, to, to drop it and her hand won't move she can't drop it right it's stuck and she goes to pull at her armor and it it, it won't come off and instead, there is the torch lying on the ground. The torch lying on the ground, just smoldering, waiting for her to toss it into that building. They killed one, supposedly, one last person on her list. Because she's been, she's been good. She's done everything, but she's never asked for more power. There was the power she got. She never asked for any more, which is why there's no more debt. Which is what these last years are about. And you can see that on her face. All this pain. And she just... Her hand trembles as it moves towards that, that torch to grab it. And, and she picks it up and she looks at that house and the, the the alcohol and the alchemic chemicals that are coating everything. And she just, she just can't this time. She just drops it on the ground and takes her sword and tries to shove it through her own chest instead. And when she does that, you feel the pain hit you and whoom, you are back in the stony area with everyone else. Once again, there are rocks everywhere. You're in some sort of pocket dimension that you don't recognize. And you see Big Red, one point for me. That wasn't funny, Red. And it wasn't fun. Games are supposed to be fun. Um, Tempest is in tears and she says, I wasn't strong enough the first time. I wasn't strong enough the first time and more people died. I wasn't strong enough. She's like, I'm never, I'm never, I'm never, I'm, I'm never just doing gonna, that again. Just gonna come over and like give you my cloak. Y you need a blanket. I am so sorry. And she says, my, my life, my life is not worth all of their lives. It never was. It never will be. No matter what I do, it will never be worth all of their lives. All the people that I killed. I'm just going to, like, give Red a very level, very heavy look and not say anything more. And he smiles and you see those fangs now. You're not having fun. Well. No. 
so sorry, but you asked for a game. You didn't ask for a fun one. And let me tell you something. If you think that you and your little friends here are going to be strong enough to actually stop any of the cosmic forces at play in this grand chess game, you're going to have to be able to face more than just your sad little moments. And Are you okay? And his visage starts, <laughs> like, trickling away almost like ash on the wind as he resumes a form that is not the gargoyle and not human it is something else what you see before you is uh you as a player would know it's a cambion i've already decided how i'm going to respond to you and i'm not going to let you break me of that just because you're being a little bit mean right now but that wasn't okay the others will do better. Well, let's see. And you see. did fine. Let's see, then. And that's gonna be... Oh, a new. A new. You find yourself vanished in, in an instant. You are... Huh. You know what? You're in that village that you were just in, surrounded by those guards. Oh. And there's that vagabond looking right at you, smirking. And you see a little black furred Aslari boy looking at you from beyond the soldiers. Don't do it. Don't hurt them. And you can't speak either because you're playing charades. What are you going to do? Obviously the mind link. I'm just going to have Nuka pick me up from my shoulders and take to the sky. Okay. So you take to the sky and the soldiers start screaming and cursing at you. And where are you flying? Out of the village. The second that your dragon crosses the barrier of that village. Whoom! You're back again. Huh. Fine too for you. One for me. Let's see how your last one does. Ah, fuck. And you guys hear that fuck carry on an echo just a little bit. And Wisp, you find yourself sitting in a hut. A very, very familiar hut. And you see this huge mass of a woman with layers of netting and rags wrapped around her in the semblance of a dress. Her stringy black hair curtaining her face in shadows, her two pinprick yellow eyes staring dead at you. That's my auntie. And her spindly, spidery limbs rest on this tiny table for her sheer size, creaking it. And she folds her arms. 
Well, hello there, dearie. What would you like? <clears throat> Wisp is just going to shake their head. Hmm. How about this, then? Let's you and I have some fun. We'll play a little game and see who wins. <coughs> and she starts <laughs> shuffling cards. And these look like tarot cards to you, actually. Mm. And she hands you a hand of three, and she takes a hand of three. And she plays her first one, and it has an image of all of you, but in stained glass. And then the three cards in your hand are three images that allude to or are otherwise representations of something deeply personal to you. Can you describe to us what three cards there are? Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> shit, give me a second. The first one, um, is going to be, at first glance, just an open road. Um, but in almost imperceptibly small letters off in the distance there is barely visible a banner that says welcome home um the second one is a stage but it's a stage in a forest with no audience but it's there and it's built solid and it's lit but there's no one to see and the third one I think Steven you already knew what this one is going to be it, it'll be the uh, the woman who's been a bit of a recurring feature okay and Baba doesn't give you rules for this game. You're just supposed to know what card to play in response to hers. So, roll a d20. You can add your insight or <laughs> your investigation. Uh, Beat my roll. I have investigation's a better. So let's see. I got a 15 first. I got 17. 17. <laughs> you win the first hand, and she takes her card and places it on top of yours. And then she takes another card and places it down. This one has the image of a worm with what looks like maybe a flower or something blooming from its mouth. Ew. Roll again. Same thing? Uh-huh. Uh, that's a 15. Meets beats. Barely. <laughs> so, roll one last time as she gives you those two cards. And the third card she places down has an image of many different colored birds, all seemingly made of fire, with the multicolored prismatic one in the center. Oh, God damn it. Okay. That's a 23. She got a 12. Ha <laughs> ha! So as you place your last card, oh. she smiles at you, hand sort of shoves the cards your direction, and 
Whom? You are back now. You are no longer in Baba's hut. And all of you realize that as you blink, just you're back on the ship again. Well, wasn't that fun? Parts of it. Actually, parts of it really were. Tempest just gives Mask a look like daggers. Like, you gotta be effing kidding me. No, I'm not. Like, Mask has decided on a path for this and is committed. Masquerade, make a persuasion roll. Okay. <laughs> you know what? Uh, we start every session with a point of inspiration. We do. And then I use it. 24. 24. Yes. You, he looks at you, and as this devil creature, his face melts into a human once again, just the, the bottoms of his eyes narrow just a little. He opens his mouth like he wants to say something, and nothing comes out. He looks at a new then Wisp, and then his red eyes flick over to Tempest. I'm sorry. Wait. Oh, shit. What? I won't repeat myself. And he sort of straightens. Yeah, Mask is just Beaming like this is has been hotel. Give me a minute. <laughs> <laughs> no, Mask is very proud of you, and you can like very much see it on his face. Are we done here? Tempest just walks off. Do you wish to be done? <laughs> <laughs> He he, he kind of like half smirks at that one. Cheeky. All right. Be safe. And we'll call again. All right. Give me a perception roll. Anyone who wants to can do this. Anyone who's here. Oh, let's go. <laughs> yeah. Where's my d20s? They ran away. Uh, so I rolled a 19, and I'm pretty sure that is a 19. So. Okay. Why is my d and beyond I so got, open? Holy, I got 11. 11? Holy fuck. Hang on. I got a 31. Whoo! <laughs> <laughs> so, a new actually makes it. I wasn't thinking it was going to make this, to be honest. But a new makes it. What was the DC? Twenty-five. Oh, fuck. A new. <laughs> you. I mean, if you roll a natural twenty, you get it anyway. Yeah. But um, a new. You hear him mutter as he vanishes in a puff of flame. I think I see why she picked them. And he's gone. This bitch. Wisp is going to uh, smack Mask kind of on the shoulder from behind. Just kind of a sharp little... Gah! <laughs> I know. I know. I can't help myself. And I really can't help myself this time. And look, it's kind of working. <laughs> Tell that to Tempest. I kn Actually, don't right now. <laughs> Okay, I, I won't. And I will do my best not to let this happen to the rest of you again. I I know my best probably isn't going to be good enough, but I promise I will try. Uh, 
And Wisp will hug Mask uh, and just say, you big idiot. Man, I sure wish I got this level of concern when I made a deal with the devil. I made a deal with the devil to play charades with us. You made a deal with the devil to annihilate a bunch of us. Sorry. There's a big difference. Yeah, you made a deal with the devil before the games. That's fair. I did. Come here. I'm going to like pull you into the group hug. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very sorry, Anu. So... You guys have a couple more months at sea before you reach your destination, and we are going to skip. Let's see if anything eventful happens. <laughs> oh, because that wasn't eventful. <laughs> so... No, nah, that, that was nothing. That was Tuesday. <laughs> you have four nights. Four distinct and separate nights. Oh, boy. <laughs> in which you experience rain or thunder or other inclement, though, just mildly disgruntling weather. And that's it. So, I would like to spend a good portion of this, like, stretch of time just popping up where Tempest is and trying to make her laugh. Okay. Tempest spends an inordinate amount of time drinking alcohol. Okay. Okay, that's fair. I will uh, join in the alcohol drinking more than a couple of times. I'm, like, actually big concerned about whether or not you're okay. Uh, Wisp is going to uh, intermittently attempt to water down the alcohol on the on board. Okay. So, I want so Wisp... So, Tempest does not become an alcoholic strictly because uh, Wisp is really good at watering it down. <laughs> <laughs> So I need Wisp to make a stealth roll. I need uh, Masquerade to make a performance check. And regardless of how well you do, Tempest is going to tell us how she reacts, whether you're good at it or not. <laughs> Dirty 20. Okay. So, like, Masquerade that's, is a jester. He's that's a 17 for stealth. 17 for stealth. So does 17 beat your passive perception, Tempest? Yeah. It, it does. Okay. So <laughs> I'm a charisma character. Not a wisdom character. Okay, so the other charisma character, unbeknownst to you, has been successfully watering down the booze. <laughs> and Masquerade, he's very clearly a professional jester. You've learned this over the past couple of months. How do you respond to his uh, humorous advances? Um, Tempest throws things at at him consistently <laughs> I then catch and start juggling that's that's fine but that's that's how it's gonna be oh no, look at me up funny <laughs> throw things catch it yeah that's that's fine so, you know she throws things uh she grumbles um uh she starts um uh she doesn't notice that the alcohol is so bad Right, that the alcohol is watered down because she's not really tasting it. She's doing it um, for something to do. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, there are a couple times that you get a sticker out of her or a laugh out of her. And usually after that happens, Mask will give a little bit of space, but like, you know, they're always there in the general vicinity, just, like, paying attention and ready to, like, snipe in and try to, like, make a witty comment or something. It gets a little bit annoying, actually, at points. Yeah. Eventually, Tempest says something like, Mask, I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to cheer me up, but I haven't thought about that. In 300 years and I had to relive it so is this one of those situations where you just need to be sad I mean maybe I don't know I feel I mean I'm in a different place now like the world is so different 
and I don't deserve it. Not at all. I don't deserve anything that I have. Let's see. How, how would you all define people, deserving it? I... Look, I... I wasn't strong enough to stop. I always had a way out. There was always a way out. I could just die. And it would be over. It would be That's out. That's too much to ask of anybody. But how much suffering did I cause so many people? Because I was too afraid. I was too afraid. No, over it, again. it is the prerogative of any living thing to continue its existence. That's all any of us are trying to do. It means your fire didn't go out. And that's not a bad thing, even if it had a bad fallout for many, many people. That's... It was not <coughs> your decision. Yeah, well... I mean... So... It doesn't let's feel start, like it. Let's start keeping track. People saved. And when you hit 10,000, you can forgive yourself for all, all of this. I... That's not how this works. You know that. You don't have to I mean, lives. it could be, though. Why, why not? Why not do so much good that you circle back around to the other side? Why not just... Look, do you think, do you think any of those who hated me in any of those places didn't have good reason to? You think Oris, that misled Ballad and chased me through three different worlds because he thought I could be redeemed? I do, and uh, he's not here. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh. Wisp has not been eavesdropping, but knows the two of them are talking. He is going to walk past and as passing, going to point at Tempest, almost kind of figure guns and be like, you are deserving of love and keep going. <laughs> See? Uh -huh. Yeah. What are those called? Finger crossbows? <laughs> I think so, yes. Hmm. Look. I I understand. I mean, I don't. I don't understand because I have never <laughs> messed up quite that big, but we all love you. You know, like, we're all much happier now that you are here with us and adventuring with us. Yep. Thank you. I just don't know how to deal with this anymore. You know, I had forgotten it. I just pushed it aside. I'd put it in this little box in the back of my mind and didn't think about it. And now I I want everything to be I, redeemed. I, I want redemption. It, people can change. And yet, all the pain I feel from all those terrible things that I did. All because I wanted to do good. And and that's that's why. When when we talk about all of these things, right? What power are you going to apply? What what responsibility do you have for it? What are the ramifications? That's why I take it so seriously. And you should. And if it makes you feel any better, I have learned my lesson. I will be much, much more care I will try to be much, much more careful. Do you wish you would be more careful? <laughs> I don't have a pie to throw in your face right now, but I owe you one. Wait until we get back to the city. <laughs> I'll be on guard. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you, too. And for what it's worth, I really am sorry. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what I would do in your shoes. Not again. So. Yeah. I, yeah, I really mean it when I say that my plan is just genuinely to uh, try and make friends with this demon. I... <laughs>
I'll do whatever I can to support you. <laughs> can I hug you? If you say no, I'll understand and walk away. No, you can hug me. Okay, why, I, I will why hug you then? Tempest. And then I will walk away. <laughs> Tempest blushes a little bit and then goes back to uh, what she's doing. Uh, no, she doesn't. She puts the drink down. Okay. So Tempest Aww. does this mo I presume this moment kind of sticks with you for the rest of the day. Oh, yeah. So roll a d20 for me. Roll a d20. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Fifteen. Fifteen. So, it's nighttime. You're trancing however you do. I presume in your cabin that you've been given. Mm -hmm. And you're awakened not by a sound, not by a, a, a feeling, not by a smell. It's more like an intuition. A sort of sense that you're being watched or maybe you're not alone. And when you open your eyes, sitting cross-legged in the corner in front of the door is a familiar person that, uh, dark-skinned human nobleman. And he's not wearing all red. He's wearing simple traveler's clothes, a tunic and some breeches. He's a fool, you know. Who is a fool? The jester. I mean, that is what jesters are, correct? Out of... What, what would Mask be, if not himself? Out of everyone on this ship, I think you know better than the rest of them. There's no redeeming people like us. Yeah, there was a... I'm not going to lie here, because why lie? The last few months have been hard. I had dedicated myself after to redemption. And how's that going for you? It's hard. It's oh so hard, but I mean did I really think it was going to be easy? Do you really think it's possible? I won't know unless I try. Hmm. And I just have to keep trying. Hmm. Because I know what happens if I give up. I know the pain that will be caused if I give up. And I cannot give up. he stands up and the simple clothes wash away to what is essentially a um, it looks almost like religious regalia it's a fine black and white coat with gold accents and the entire ensemble shirt, pants, shoes all of it in stark black and white with gold accents as these huge black feathery wings just sprout from his back and his red eyes turn yellow. This is what I used to be once. Until I fell. Tempest. They call me the Namekeeper and have for 
eons. For you, it's 10,000 lives. For me, 10,000 names. But I'm not near reaching my goal. Why are you not a near infinite being? Near infinite, but near is really so far from infinity when you think about it. But you have so much time and power. You only need the desire to move forward. Do you know how hard it is to move forward when you're an eternal being? We, you said yourself, we have so little time and we waste it. And that you have so much time and you're afraid to act. Well, maybe this is my starting point. Why did you do it? Why, Why? did you make your deal? I made it to help people. I made it because... I thought no one else could do the job, and so I would do it. I would do it, and someone promised me, promised me my wish. They would fulfill my wish. But the cost was too high. And I thought at the time, I'm so naive, that I would pay anything just to see the people who I knew survive. Who cared about 10,000, 100,000 other people who would die because they would not be the ones that I knew. And so I made a decision. But I couldn't live with it. Every day was torture. I felt bad. If I didn't feel bad, then it wouldn't have mattered. I could have taken another deal and another deal and another deal, and I would still be with the Raven Queen, and she would still be the evil that she was. She was redeemed. She is on her path. Is there not a path for you in the infiniteness of everything? I don't know. I mean... My story is not so dissimilar to yours. What was it that made you fall? A deal. To save a life. A life that ended within a hundred years anyway. But I Us loved her with all my heart. That's why they tell you. That's why every celestial tells you, don't fall in love with a mortal. Because they always die. That's what they do, isn't it? They die, and they perish, and they wither, and you can try to keep it alive for just one more day, and all it is is just one more day. But that price doesn't go away, does it? And so you've chosen now to never love again? To never I feel had. again? Yes. I know that choice. I know that choice so very well. <laughs> How's it working out for you? Because yeah. it's not working out for me. Up until a couple of months ago, when we played our little game, I thought it was working out just fine, and that I was just destined to be this. See, what you, even in your plainer experience, but as a mortal, still don't understand is, you have a concept of shades of grey that creatures in the spiritual world just don't. If you live here, you're good. If you live here, you're lawful. If you give, live here, you're evil. If you live here, you're chaotic. You are where you are, and that's all it ever is. And I was supposed to be good and lawful and everything holy and sacred, and I fell. 
Because I chose to. Because I chose to. And I really thought up until now that this, and he snaps his fingers and in a flash of purple fire, he is an ugly, visceral, feral looking demon with these fangs poking out, curling upward, teeth, long jaw dropping near to the waistline. These long ears, four of them, just pulling back feet away from his head. This is what I look like now. Tell me this can be good. I, I mean, someone might be into it. I've met a lot of people. Tell me anything. Ugly and beautiful. This, Ugly and beautiful and good are all different things. Right? Isn't it what we do? Look at me. I am, by all accounts, a spectacular member of my species. Perfect. And yet I did terrible things. Being beautiful doesn't make you good. Perceiving yourself now as ugly doesn't make you evil. But that's just the thing. You saying that, your friends believing that, eons since time first began, this me was evil, chaos, murder, death. What I was once was good and holy, and now all of it just feels like a question. And I don't like questions. I like answers. Look, I'm, I'm going to ask a question. I just because told you I don't like bothers, questions. Because it, it, it bothers me. It bothers me. Why do you let others tell you what you are and you aren't? Because that's how Even you if they it. told you you were good and holy before, are you sure that's what you were? If they tell you you're evil now, are you sure that's what you are? Are you not what you decide to be yourself? I know this sounds terrible coming from me. Because <laughs> I can't do this myself, but I ask you, why? Even if they tell you you're from here, so you're like that. You're from here, so you're chaos. You're from here, so you're lawful. Aren't you just whatever you are? And isn't that the way you're supposed to be? I'm, I'm so sorry to interrupt you and keep going, but I, I have to go. Um, this has been awesome. This has been amazing. Finish up. Love oh, you. Oh, yeah. Bye. See ya. Bye, Farrah. So, I think that question is a good place to end this, actually. Okay. So, we will get to the conclusion of this particular conversation next time but thank you everybody for watching thank you everybody for joining us man so much goodness um so uh until next time everybody uh be good to each other and uh make sure you tell your story your way see you guys <laughs>